Right, let's have a look inside the greenhouses, see what's going on. So straight away, uh, this is the Lediva cucumber. Uh, we've had, oh, at least, I don't know, 12 to 15 off it so far. And you can see there's lots more coming. So they've done really well. I'll definitely be growing this again. I like it. I really like it. Uh, better than market more. I might, if I can get time, uh, try and train it up the, along the roof here. Put uh, Tie some canes onto these and see if I can get it to run along the roof. Keep it going. Now I had a little story about the... Uh, these are the red fig, by the way. Any ripe ones, I've just been eating them. But you can see it's sort of like a sort of little fig-shaped tomato and I have to say I'm impressed I like them I really do um, but the story, <laughs> the story is that all these uh, seven plants I think it is were supposed to be red fig um, now if you look at I don't know if you can make that out but if you look at the back this back one look at the size of, they're like a sort of standard size tomato like you know Alicante or something like that so that's not red fig. And as we move down, you know, they're not red fig. The one behind it isn't red fig. And then moving along here, I've absolutely no, you know, that looks like a beefsteak or something. And again, the one behind that, it's the, so one out of the seven turned out to be true i.e. red fig anyway what i'll do is i shall um i'll save one and uh, get the seeds out of it because I, I am impressed by it. it's a very nice tomato so i'm going to uh, stay with that i think but yeah one out of seven mm. bit of a mix up with the seed company um the others down here like i said was this one you can see it there in the back trying to get a shot in here uh, it turns out that is black opal I'm really that is delicious that is really nice I'm impressed with that in fact I think I got two of those I think this one's black opal as well and then the one behind oops the one behind is uh, San Mazzano is it San Mazzano like a plum type thing so we've got some uh, we've got some on some more back there yeah, like a plum tomato, isn't it? And then just... Uh, these are the uh, Crimson Crush. You know, I mean, they are a superb tomato. They really are. See in the back there. I've been picking them for about maybe a week. Possibly about a week. But yeah, I mean, uh, how can you not... You know... They are superb, they really are. So again, I'm going to stick with those as well. Let's have a quick look in the other greenhouse. Alright, so on the left side here, these are the stew peas. Again, these were a heritage, is a heritage tomato. And every one of these, how many is in here? One, two, four, six plants, they've all come true. Uh, and that was from the same seed company. Um, they're quite a big truss, well, big truss, but they're, they're a reasonable truss. Uh, something like about 10 fruits. Um, they, they seem to vary in size from like a sort of gardener's delight to a slightly bigger cherry. And the flavour isn't bad at all. So, um, the other thing I should have commented on as well, I've pinched most of them anyway. I think I've pinched them out now at six trusses. I think I'm being optimistic, to be honest. Uh, this far north, but we'll see. Yeah, so that's stew piece. And uh, moving over on the bell peppers, um, you can see the flowering. I've got fruit on. Let me just see if I can get a shot. So there's some nice peppers coming on now. Um, it's weird. I came down last night, well, late yesterday afternoon, now the day before, all these leaves were absolutely fine, and then I came down, yes, let's say late yesterday afternoon, and if I just show you around the plant, you can see that something's been nibbling. 
the leaves. So I had a closer inspection. I'll see if they're still alive, what I found. So I put them in this little... Didn't want to come out. These tiny green caterpillars or yeah so they're about five to six mil long something like that I found about three of them uh, I'm assuming they're some kind of moth maybe if anybody knows what they are um, if you could let me know but um, they, saw, they also had uh, green fly aphids so they've had soapy water again that's the end of them I've got some nice radishes coming along here. I actually saw two rows in this trough, but only one one row came up. But they uh, surprised me actually. I thought with all the dry weather, you know, they wouldn't do very well at all. But um, I picked one yesterday, and I guess, yeah, they're almost there now. So look forward to those. And in this trough here, this is Rocket again. I saw two rows, but just a few came up. I'm going to saw another row this afternoon. Raspberries, these are the summer fruity ones, they're finished now. These are the new growth, so another job very soon will be to prune out the old fruited canes and tie in the new ones. This is one of the damson trees, and again you get a similar story with brown rot. So I just try to keep walking, having a look round and removing any that's uh, looking suspicious although they you know got brown or anything like that just try and you know get rid of them don't leave them on the tree and this is the loganberry it's just about finished there's still some fruits on but uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I've noticed my blueberries here are uh, starting to ripen so what I'll probably do is pull this net further down to protect those and then again the loganberry will just need the old fruiting canes cutting away. These are the new ones I've just put to one side. Those must be 10 to 12 feet long. So we just need to, at some point to tie those in for next year. These are the root frames and this is the uh, parsnip bed. It's just gone absolutely bonkers. I can't probably get a good shot inside here, there's too much going on, but I can see white root down there, so it looks like I'm going to get something. And if you can see through the environment here, the, these are the Autumn King 2, they've really caught up now. You can see how they're pushing up against the uh, top of the frame here. But again, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I'll, I'll get a nice crop from those. This is the other few pongo beans that plants that I had on this raised bed and I think what I'm going to do is leave these just to for the seed really so I'll just let those ripen because I definitely want to grow these again. So these were the uh, stir on multi sown onions you can see now they're starting to finish their uh, the tops are going yellow but I won't um, pull them out I'm just going to leave them for another few weeks to you can see the skins are ripening but I'm in no hurry to uh, pull them out just yet. The chard speaks for itself. And like I said, the pongo beans, you can see they're just starting to flower now. So with the courgette bed, um, wow, well, well what can I say, yeah we've just been picking loads and loads and loads and giving most of them away to be honest. Uh, but at least it fills the ground up. These are the Musselburgh Leaks, they're looking alright, they'll have enjoyed that good downpour, we've had a good spell of rain the last two days. And I'm hoping you can see through the mesh here, this Savoy cabbage, I think that's almost ready. Again, probably another week and I'll be cutting that. I've got some others coming along. The Discovery apples are ripening fast now. Again, I just thin two to a spur, and blackberries have lots and lots of fruit on. It depends whether or not we get a dry enough autumn, and the sweet peas are still going, still going strong. 
This is the second bed of savoys which were sown, I can't remember how many weeks later than the others but I'm astonished about how soon they've caught up. They're not quite there in terms of hearting up yet but they're really, I can't believe how fast they've caught up. And for that very reason I sowed some more. So these are, uh, you know, when I find a bit of space they'll be going out and hopefully they'll grow and I can harvest those, you know, maybe kind of February or something like that. And there's my asparagus that grew from seed and then I've just got some more dill coming through and uh, some parsley, you just see one's popped through now. Recently I told you I had some good news regarding uh, two of my blueberry bushes that lost all the leaves and I showed you them in the last video I think it was and the, the leaves are all coming back which is brilliant. Well I've got some more good news. So Thompson and Morgan had uh, got in touch after seeing the video I did when the, the first lot of bare-rooted strawberry plants they sent me, um, all bar one, had just died off. And they uh, wrote to me anyway and said they were really sorry about that and uh, they would send me some new ones and they have. Surprise package came yesterday. So uh, anyway, I came down say yesterday afternoon, got them in. This time they'd sent uh, potted up plants, you know, they were in pots. So I'm really, really, really grateful. Thank you, Thompson and Morgan. You uh, certainly promised me and you delivered on that. So I'm very grateful. And I'm just noticing down here there's one with a little fruit on. So I'll remove that because I don't want the plant diverting its energy into making fruits just now. I want it to put the energy into making a good, strong root system. So that's brilliant. Anyway, I'll keep you posted on how those do. This is the variety, uh, I think it's called Sweet Colossus. If you enjoyed the content of the video, don't forget to smash that like button for me. Drop a comment down below. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye for now.